This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is one of the lesser known ABUS disc padlocks, and that is this one, the Model 2690. Now, ABUS has a surprisingly large number of disc padlock product lines. Offhand, they include the Model 20 with a disc detainer core, the Model 25, which used to have a lever core and now has a dimple core. Then we have the Model 26, this one right here, a standard pin tumbler lock with a spinner in front of the keyway. And then we have the Model 29, also with a standard pin tumbler lock, but no spinner. But when we think about disc padlocks, we most often think about 70 millimeter disc padlocks because they are by far the most common version of them. And in fact, most companies only make 70 millimeter versions. However, you may not know that ABUS also makes a 90 millimeter version of the Model 26, which in addition to being much larger is also much, much heavier. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now, with a regular disc padlock, we have a clamshell design. You can see it's welded together all the way around the seam. Not so on the inside of that seam. Avis has left that unwelded. But what we have is a clamshell design with the mechanism in the middle, and this is largely a hollow lock. While it is made out of metal, obviously it has some heft, you can feel that this is a hollow product. Not the case with the Model 26. Now normally when a company makes a larger version of their disc padlock, they simply scale it up, the exact same lock, just larger. That's not what we have here. The Model 2690 is an entirely different animal from the 2670, even though they do look similar at first blush. So, with the 2690, we still have the two clamshell halves welded together on the outside. But once we look at the inside here, you can see that this is not your standard hollow lock. This is filled with a whole lot of steel laminations, making this almost a solid steel product, with the exception of the places where the shackle would need to move, or where there needs to be travel in the locking mechanism. So not only is this much, much larger, this padlock is considerably heavier. Now, when we're operating it, I notice that there is a lot of drag on this core, almost like, uh-oh, wrong key. There we go. Almost like there's something rubbing on the inside. I don't know what it is, but it does make turning that core relatively difficult. I don't know if that is something that is unique to this particular example of the 2690, or if it's something that goes across the product line. But what I can tell you is that drag makes this considerably harder to pick. And that's what we're gonna try to do right now. We're gonna see what it takes to pick this 2690 open. So let's take a close look at that keyway can see it's guarded by a spinner and it has a very tight little Yale style keyway. It is paracentric, it is small, it is going to be difficult to get into. And what we're going to use to navigate that keyway is a very small wiper insert that we're gonna put in the top of the keyway. And then the Sparrows SS Dev hook, their short one. Okay, let's put some tension on here and see if we can get this guy open. Okay, little click out of one. Number two, binding, gotta click there. Three is loose, four is loose. Click out of five. Back to one, one's still loose. Two's loose, three is loose, four is binding. Okay, I think I'm getting a little bit of counter rotation on four. Okay, I think I got four set and nothing on five. Back to the beginning. Nothing on one, two, three. Okay, three's given some feedback. And that drag is really 
hampering my feedback a lot, but I think I got three set after some counter rotation. Back to one. Okay, I think I'm getting some feedback on one. And as often the case, because this is the very front pin, it's proving to be a little bit difficult to get some leverage on them. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. And we got the lock open. Okay, so as you can see, that definitely gave me a little bit of trouble. I think most of that was because of the considerable amount of drag on the core from that mechanism rubbing someplace on the inside. Not sure if that's something that is standard to the Model 2690. I know it certainly is not the case on the 2670. This is a really smooth operating lock. But if that is what happens on all the 2690s, if you run across one of these, be prepared for a little bit of fight because that drag on the core really hampers your feedback. And from what I could feel, we're dealing with at least three spools, possibly more. So that's all I have for you on this model 2690, one of the lesser known members of the Abus Discus family. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.